Hey, Foundry Church, my name is Stone Felty, and normally you see Matt up here, but Matt was unable to be here, so I'm taking over for the day. And we wanted to share with you just some cool things that are happening with our missions department. And so we have Kristen Berghorst right here, who is our missions coordinator. And we just wanted to ask you a few questions. Love to answer them. So the first question is, what is the Foundry doing internationally as far as missions goes? Sure. Well, right now we support five international missionaries. We have Pastor Oliver... Austin and Tate Banama, and Pete and Libby Mishka in Zambia. We have Eric and Jordan Akterhoff in Toronto. And then we have Brett and Karen Curtis as part of YWAM in Kona. And we're really working on supporting them, both financially, but then also we want to make sure that we support them relationally as well. One of the really cool things that is on the horizon is that we are going to be taking our first international mission trips <laughs> from the Foundry, um, more than one in a year. So we're really excited to get that started next year. Awesome. So yeah. is that something that our groups could get involved with? For sure. We'd love for groups to do that. One mission trip that we still have some room on is going to be our mission trip to Dominican Republic, which is going to take place from February 12th through February 19. So if you're interested in going on that, please let me know as soon as possible so we can get you on that list. We also have a couple more mission trips coming up. Just don't have a specific date yet for those. One other way, if you're not able to go internationally, is we do have our wonderful international missionaries that would love to hear from you, mm -hmm. whether you send them an email, sending them snail mail, because sometimes it takes three to four months to get wow. mail to them, wow. or even some care packages. I know our missionaries would love to hear from our church. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, if you or your group wants to get involved in any of these ways, just shoot an email to matt.kuman at foundrychurch.net, and he'll get you connected where you need to go. Well, thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks. And thanks, groups. So this past week, Eric read from James 3, verses 7 and 8 about how our tongues can be like poison. And we can either spread poison by engaging in gossip and slander, or we can ingest the poison by listening and filling our heads with such talk. And so he used both the book of James and various Proverbs to show the destruction that gossip can bring to people, either by speaking it or by listening to it. And so there are always ways that we can counteract the poison of gossip by removing ourselves from situations where slander is happening or by standing up for those who are um, being spoken about without being there. And so now we're going to transition into some of our questions and we, we have some kids questions. So if you've got kids in, in the room or kids in your group, why don't you take some time and do these kids questions with them? Question number one, how did the challenge of refraining from sarcasm go this past week? Question number two, have you ever tamed something? Maybe it was an animal that you trained or tamed. How did that go and what did it take to actually tame that thing? In James chapter 3, verses 7 and 8, it reads, All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures, are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil full of deadly poison. In what ways do you struggle with the words that come out of your mouth? And in what ways does restless evil come out without you even knowing it? So for question number four, we've talked in the past about taming our tongue. And what taming our tongue does not mean is just concealing all the feelings that we have. In Proverbs 10, 18, it says, Whoever conceals hatred with lying lips and spreads slander is a fool. So sometimes we try and let ourselves off the hook by, by explaining that we didn't actually say anything out loud. We just harbored it in our heart. But that too can become a deadly poison. How can you avoid allowing evil words and thoughts and hatred to harbor in your heart? Question number five, how would you describe gossip 
and slander? And how can you avoid gossip and slander? Proverbs 26, 20 through 22 reads, Without wood, a fire goes out. Without gossip, a quarrel dies down. As charcoal to embers and as wood to a fire, so is, is a quarrelsome person for kindling strife. The words of a gossip are like choice morsels. They go down to the innermost parts. Now, would you let somebody poison you? Pretty clearly the answer is no, but oftentimes we don't think of, of poison as something um, that can get in you without being ingested. It can become a deadly, deadly poison without just going into your mouth. Poison can also come in through your ears. What are some examples of poisons that you've listened to and things that you've let into your ears that you've listened to that you should not have? Do you remember this past week when Eric was talking about an antidote and what an antidote is? It's a a medicine taken or given to counteract a specific poison or toxin. And so what is the antidote for you when you are exposed to poison this week in the form of gossip or slander? And finally, this week, the challenge is to remove yourself from all gossip and slander. If you find yourself in a situation where someone is being talked about and they're not there, either remove yourself from the situation or encourage that person to speak to that person that they're talking about. Well, Foundry Church, that's all we have for group's questions this week. Um, We're excited to see you back next week. Have a good week.